Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I made a video a few weeks ago with a multimeter that I picked up at the flea market. It cost me three euros and we had a look at it. And to be quite honest, it was not very impressive. Not that you couldn't use it for basic current and resistance and voltage measurements, but the fact that it didn't even have all the features it said on the box. So for example, it said it would bleep on continuity test. Well, it didn't. And when we looked inside, it didn't even have a bleeper fitted, you know. It said it had fuses on the inputs. We opened it up, there were no fuses inside it. So I had to give it, I'll be honest with you, zero out of 10. Not because it was useless, but because it wasn't even as described, yeah? So I published that video, it was very popular actually, and shortly afterwards a company, Venlab, contacted me and they said, hey Rich, we've seen your video, would you like to try one of our cheap multimeters and see what you think? So they've sent me this one, this is the VM200M. This is a very inexpensive multimeter, if we just take a quick look online. We can see this is available on Amazon, for example, at less than £10. So this is a very inexpensive multimeter. So I thought, yeah, actually, I'll have a look at this. I will review it. And let's see if it does better than the €3 Euro multimeter that we did find. In fact, let's see if this is useful for repair work. Venlab did send me this multimeter free of charge, but I'm not being paid to make this review. I will give an honest opinion of the item. And to be quite honest, guys, you know I've got quite a few multimeters. I don't need a multimeter. I don't need another multimeter. So the reason I decided to review this is not so I get something for free. It's because I want to see what we can use that is inexpensive for you guys who are not able to buy more expensive test equipment. Okay, so now we've discussed that, let's have a look at it. And here it is, you can see it's still sealed. So we'll open the box. We have some test leads, let's have a look at them. Here they are. They are not very long compared to ones I normally use. We can have a look at the moment. We have some batteries. We have the multimeter itself. And we have a user manual. Let's take a quick look at the manual. Well, we can see we have the usual safety information. It says this is conforming to cap two, 600 volts or over. I will take them at their word. I'm not sure how I would actually test that. It mentions it has a display hole, so this is you can get it to hold a particular voltage reading. And I press hold, it freezes the display. A little bit about measurement, DC and AC measurement. It's just telling you how to insert the leads correctly. DC current, resistance. Gain, so this test transistors, we can play with that. Diode measurements, so we have a diode mode, a continuity mode. It does say it will buzz, so we can have a look at that. I think it also says it has a bleeper on the diode mode, according to this. And here are the specifications. So we have a resolution, the smallest voltage is 0.1 of a millivolt. We have on AC voltage down to 0.1 of a volt. DC current goes to 0.1 of a microamp. This is probably more important to me than the millivolt reading, unless I want to do something clever with it, like add it to a short finder. But that's, that's good. I'm quite happy with that. Resistance down to 0.1 of an ohm. Gain. It mentions the buzzer again. Then we have Chinese. So this is a fairly basic multimeter. 
it doesn't have a lot of digits of resolution but usually for repair work we don't really need that there are occasions where we would want a more accurate voltage reading other than that i think this could be rather useful if it does what it says it does i just mentioned these leads so these are the test leads i'll just take one of the leads i'm using on the fluke this is one of the ones that kai sent me so that is the extent of the lead and my test leads are that much longer about 12 inches or 30 centimeters something like that these are not overly short but they are a little on the short side these are not the very sharp meter probes but having said that most meters do come with these and i end up buying my own needle probes okay so I won't give it particularly black marks for that because this is very common. And this is the multimeter. Okay. It's quite chunky actually. Feels a bit cheap, but it is cheap. So, you know, what would you expect? It feels exactly like what it is. We have a little cover on the display. I'm going to take that off. Oh, it has a backlight on the display, that's quite nice. And we have the usual ranges you would expect, so DC volts, AC volts, DC amps up to 10 amps, diode and continuity, and resistance. The meter came with some batteries, so we can put these in. These are, these are in fact double A cells, many meters take triple A, so you would expect maybe these will last a bit longer. And I guess we undo this cover. What's it say on the cover? Remove the cables before opening the case. Makes sense. Uh, well, at least this one doesn't tell me that there are no user serviceable parts inside. When, for example, it contains batteries and a fuse, like that three euro meter I had that told me I was not qualified to change the batteries. <laughs> I'll give it an extra point for that. Okay. Battery cover is nice and secure. It has a little integrated stand or foot. It was a little bit stiff, maybe probably just the first time. Yeah, you can open it. Watch the thumbnails, but you can open it. Yeah. And you can stand it up. Although, to be quite honest, I never use that on any of my meters. Let's have a look. Oh, the display is nice. Yeah, it's a nice big display. This is a manual ranging meter. It makes a bleep as we change range. So it definitely has a bleeper. We have backlight. This thing likes to bleep. It seems to bleep every time you press something or switch something. <laughs> you can play tunes on it. You can play tunes on it, okay. <laughs> That's just my infantile sense of humour coming through there, as you can see. I just know what would happen if you had these in a school for students. We had the connector for the transistors. So let's try the things we would normally try first. And the first one for me, when I pick up a new multimeter, is how good is the continuity range? Because this is crucial for fault finding. So we'll go into continuity range, that same volts. So this is actual fact is the diode test mode, okay? Continuous bleep is a short. Okay, that's nice. If this gives a single bleep on a diode, I'm going to give this top marks. Okay, here's a diode, let's see. It doesn't bleep on a diode. Oh. 
the one feature I always want on the multimeter, and I mentioned this to you guys, Venlab, because this is something I've never found on an inexpensive meter, but it's so useful for fault finding. Let me show you. This is my old fluke meter from around 1993 I bought this. And it has a feature that I've never seen on another multimeter. Somebody mentioned in the comments, they gave a list of ones that do have this feature, but there were very few and far between. So, if I take the leads and I short them together, I get a continuous bleep and it reads zero. If I take a diode, I get one bleep and a voltage reading. What makes this so important to me is when I'm tracing on a circuit board. So when I go on the board across a short, I have a continuous bleep. When I go to a diode or a transistor junction, I get a blip. And I don't need to look at this. I do not need to look at this meter. I know short and I know semiconductor, even without looking at that. Yeah, yeah. you can't see it now. I know it's a semiconductor. I know it's a short. If this did the same thing, this would be highly recommended, even if just for this use. But this one, no sound on diode, <whistles> continuous on short. What the fluke does would be so easy to implement, in my opinion, that I just don't understand why all meters don't do it. Okay, so. That wasn't a rant, that is just honestly my opinion about test meters. Let's put the light on and let's see if this time is out. That's another little bugbear of mine that they don't sell for long enough. We'll go to resistance range, so I'm on the low ohms range. Yeah. So it seems the bleeper is only on the on the diode range. There's no resistance bleep range. Ah, oh, that's how long it takes for the display to go out. That's very common, by the way. My fluke doesn't even have that feature, so I can't really complain about it. Yeah. I will also try another thing I always want to know is how fast does it respond? The bleeper. Well, it responds quickly. I've noticed now actually that this actually changes to ohms. So if we short, it's gone to ohms. When I go to a diode, it's reading diode. Uh, what's it do with a low value resistor? This, this is a 39 ohm, it's quite a low value, not extremely low. Yeah. 38.5, so that reads quite well, actually. Seeing as I am at this point in the video, let's just measure a few resistors. Well, the first one is a 4.7 meg resistor, but I've just realized actually it won't read it because it only goes to two. Let's see what this does. Yeah, 4.7 meg. Let's try a one meg resistor. I mean, in fairness, it does say it only goes to two meg. I do occasionally need to read higher resistances when I'm repairing. One meg, nice, 0.979, 979K. I mean, these are only, I think it's a 1% actually. Point. Yeah, that's about 984K, but you know, both of those would tell me that was a good resistor in circuit. Uh, this is a lower value resistor, so this is a 100k. We'll take it down to the 200k range. Yeah. 98.7. Again. 
98.4 so this is reasonably accurate compared with the fluke this isn't calibrated by the way so i don't know how accurate this one is how about a low value resistor like a 0.22 we would find this in a lot of things like amplifiers what's it going to tell us Well, on that reading, it actually says it's short. What about on this one? Yeah, that says it's short. How about the fluke? Well, that reads it as a resistance. So, I'm seeing the limitations of this, guys, to be quite honest. Let's try a shot key diode. So in diode range, let's see what it reads. Should be about 0.15 or something like that. Yeah, 0.157. What's this read? In diode mode. well it doesn't okay it doesn't know if this is a resistor or a diode yeah okay i don't think there's any point in going any further in this uh test guys this is just not suitable for repair work. It, well, what can we see? It can't test this Chotky diode. Yeah, it doesn't know what it is. It can't test low value resistors 0.22, which is something you would find, for example, as the emitter resistors in the output stage of an amplifier. It thinks it's short. Okay, the thing with the long bleep and the short bleep, that is a feature I'd love to see in it inexpensive multimeter but sorry venlab but this one just ain't gonna work yeah thanks for sending it to me anyway i did say i would give an honest opinion i hope you do watch this review so you can see some of the problems i found with this multimeter without even really getting involved in testing a lot of things and to the rest of you guys well I did say I'll always give an honest opinion. Don't buy it. And the fact is, you need to find something better. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that extremely short review, and I will see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.